Good morning friends. Today we will talk on the glucocorticoids. The glucocorticoids, this word derived from three small words. Let's see. First one, oids. Oids, it is indicating these all drugs, they have this steroidal structure. So their chemical structure contains this steroidal basic moiety. The another word is a cortic. This cortic is indicating the cortex, so cortex of adrenal gland. So these all steroids, they are synthesized from the adrenal cortex. And the glucose, this word is indicating that they all causes the hyperglycemia. So they have the capability to increase the glucose level inside the blood. So glucocorticoids, the, these are the steroidal hormones which is released from the adrenal cortex and they have the capability to increase the glucose inside the blood means they all causes the hyperglycemia. So now let's talk on the pharmacological or physiological actions of glucocorticoids. So now let's talk on the pharmacological or physiological actions of glucocorticoids. Uh, as we have discussed, the glucocorticoids, they have the capability to increase the blood glucose. So how they do that? The first one, they have the capability to increase the enzymes which is responsible for the gluconeogenesis. So they increases the enzymes for gluconeogenesis gluconeogenesis means what genesis means to synthesize gluco means glucose and neo means other than carbohydrate sources so these are the two other sources like the amino acids and the fatty acids so synthesis of glucose from the fatty acid or amino acid that is known as gluconeogenesis so increase in the glucose production it is responsible for the hyperglycemia so this is the action number one they also causes the hyperglycemia by another mechanism and this mechanism is they transfer the GLUT4 from the cell membrane to the deeper side. So they decreases the GLUT4 amount in the cell membrane. See, GLUT4 is our glucose transporter which is mostly located on the adipose tissue, the skeletal muscles and the liver. So this GLUT4 is responsible for the absorption of glucose and it is insulin dependent. So what they do is they, they decreases the GLUT4 on the cell membrane. So glucose uptake inside the cell is reduced and that is why the glucose amount inside the blood is increased so these are the two mechanisms through which it causes the hyperglycemia this is a increase in blood glucose level however physiologically this situation is produced in response to stress so this is the pharmacological actions but in physiology when the patient is having the or when the person is having the fight or flight response means whether the patient person has to fight or fly flight right so in that condition this situation is being produced now the action number three they have the capability to reduce the production of two enzymes one is phospholipase a2 and another is cox2 the phospholipase A2, this is the enzyme which is responsible for the destruction of the phospholipids to the arachidonic acid. And then arachidonic acid with the help of COX, it is converted into the prostaglandins, prostacyclines and thromboxane. So if these two enzymes are inhibited, that reduces the production of prostaglandin. So PGE2, PGF2 alpha, this prostaglandins are reduced and because of that they have the anti-inflammatory property so they have the anti-inflammatory property these are the agent these are the steroids which is having the potent anti-inflammatory property and that is because of the inhibition of phospholipase a2 and cox2 or the decrease in the production of the phospholipase a2 and cox2 causes a decrease in the prostaglandins and because of this decrease they are responsible or they are having the anti-inflammatory property so this is the third action the first and second they are responsible for the hyperglycemia the third it is responsible 
responsible for anti-inflammatory activity. Now the action number four, they decreases the expression of the genes for cytokines. Cytokines and the adhesion molecules. These are the these are the chemicals which is responsible for the inflammation. Like they reduces the production of interleukins. They reduces the production of TNF alpha. These are the chemicals which is uh, all known as cytokines or they are also respond. They are also known as chemokines. Chemokines means they are. They are this, uh, this interleukins and TNF alpha. They are responsible for attracting the WBC towards the site of infection or inflammation. So when these agents are with these agents are reduced, they they won't attract the WBC towards the site of injury or towards the site of antigen. So because of that, the leukocyte migration is reduced, and that's why they inhibit the immunity or they suppress the immunity so glucocorticoids they reduces the genes which is responsible for the production of cytokines or also known as chemokines and the adhesion molecules adhesion molecules means it's a icam and vcam So this chemicals which is responsible for adhering the WBCs at the endothelial site they are reduced and because of that the leukocytes could not enter into the site of antigen and that is why they have the immunosuppression property. This, this mechanism is also responsible for the anti-inflammatory activity. So this is a mechanism number four now the mechanism number five the glucocorticoids they increases the breakdown of lipids so they increases the lysis of lipid so they increases the breakdown of triglycerides and that is why they reduces the triglycerides in the adipose tissue so chronic use chronic on a long-term use of this agent would would reduce the triglycerides into the adipose tissue while the short term use it cause it causes the increase in the increase in the uh, they they do this right they increases the lipolysis and because of that the fat intake inside the body would increase they increases the body weight while in a long term use they causes the decrease in the triglyceride content because of the this increase in lipolysis so this is the mechanism number five down mechanism number six they also responsible for the increase in the protein breakdown so the increase in the amino acid inside the blood is proteins are break down, broken down into the amino acids so the increase in, the increases the amino acids into the blood and that is why they are responsible for the protein or atp synthesis so the glucocorticoids they have the this six different pharmacological actions the first one is the hyperglycemia and this hyperglycemia is because of increase in the gluconeogenetic enzymes and that is why the gluconeogenesis is increased the second one is they increases the hyperglycemia they increases the blood glucose level or they causes the hyperglycemia that is because of the decrease in the glut 4 into the cell membranes of adipose tissue the skeletal muscles the liver the third one they inhibit the enzymes when they are known as a phospholipase A2 and COX2 and that is why the prostaglandin production is reduced and hence they have the anti-inflammatory property. The fourth one they in decreases the production of the cytokines and the adhesion molecules like the interleukin, TNF alpha, ICM and VCM and that's why they inhibit the leukocyte migration and having the immunosuppression and anti-inflammatory property. They also increases the breakdown of lipids that is why they reduces the triglycerides into the adipose tissue and the last one they increases the protein breakdown so they increases the amino acids into the blood and that causes the protein synthesis inside the muscles so they causes the distribution of the proteins in from the various organs so thank you if you have any doubt please let me know wish you a happy learning